Hey guys, it's great to see you today. I'm Michelle Lee and I'll be your visual artist for this lesson. Uh, today we're going into a two-part lesson uh, about volcanoes and geysers. Uh, for today we're going to focus on the volcanoes found on Earth. And next week we'll go ahead and do geysers. Um, we will use line, shape, and color to create a cross-section illustration of a volcano today. The materials we're going to need, a piece of paper, pencil, eraser, and a little box of crayons. The earth has layers like a blanket for a bed or layered clothing in the winter. Just like an onion, as you peel the onion, it has different layers. The crust is the outermost layer of the earth. It can be three to 20 miles thick, depending on where you are. It's the outside top layer or the surface that we walk on. In this picture, it's shown as brown. The next layer is the mantle. It's the layer between the crust and the core. The mantle is the layer beneath the Earth's crust. It can be um, 1,800 miles thick, and it contains most of the Earth's rock. It's about the distance between New York to Colorado. It's close to the crust. It's a cooler, harder mantle, uh, deeper uh, to the core. It's hotter, uh, soft and gooey. It can move around a bit, but most of the places it's a solid. And that one's usually shown as red. The third one, the core, or the outer core, is uh, the center of the earth. It's too hot for humans, and it's uh, melted or molten metal. Um, heat has uh, changed it from a solid to a liquid. Um, and then uh, we can see um, red hot molten metal surrounding a solid metal ball. And this area here is orange. You see that number, the fourth one, the inner core, that's that solid metal ball. And it's a uh, 4,000 from the crust to the core in distance. It can be like from New York to California. Uh, surface to the middle of the inner core, it's like another thousand miles further than the west, the width of the United States. Solid metal ball, and that's gonna be in yellow. Geologists study not only rocks, but the forces that work inside the earth and on the surface. They are scientists that study and learn about the earth. So that's including the rocks and what's inside the earth. History tells us the earth is billions of years old, about 4.5 billion. Uh, geologists use rocks to learn about the earth. So uh, the ancient Greek language, geo means the earth and ology from the Greeks, that means uh, the study of. So um, geology means the study of the earth. Many rocks we see on the surface of the earth, uh, that's including mountains to pebbles, are created by the forces deep inside the earth at work. A geologist helps to predict where volcanoes are most likely to occur. They can uh, try to give people as much warning as they can. A volcanologist is someone who specializes in studying volcanoes. A volcano is a mountain that is formed over cracks in the Earth's crust from which lava, ash, gas, and fire erupts. And erupts is when uh, it sends uh, out the lava and the ash and the gas and can be in a sudden explosion. Uh, remember, heat pressure and time causes changes in the earth. Volcanoes use different states of matter, as in solid liquids and gases. A solids keep their hard shape. The lava is a liquid and it uh, doesn't necessarily keep its shape. Instead, it takes the shape of other things, like it can be poured in a container or so. Uh, but of course it's lava, so you don't pour lava. It just kind of comes out. 
the high temperatures inside the volcano m melts metal into molten form, and that's where metal is melted. Gas can be hard to be, to, to be seen. Uh, it's like the air around us. Um, it it uh, is heated and can change things from uh, solid to liquid to gas. Um, so volcanoes act, uh, they, can, they can change the states of matter just like uh, ice cubes. You know, when you have an ice cube and it's a solid form, um, the ice cube is a solid form of water and when you heat up uh, the ice it melts and becomes uh, water and then um, that that's liquid and when the water is boiled it's heated up and becomes uh, water vapor that's a gas so the volcano does basically um, the same thing except it makes solids liquid heat and pressure causes magma the molten rock deep inside the mantle of the earth to move. When pressure is too much, the magma is forced out of the Earth's surface. Magma makes its way to the surface of the Earth and causes a volcano to form. Uh, many mountains along the west coast of North America were created by these changes inside the Earth. The lava is magma coming out onto the Earth's surface. So after the lava rushes down the mountainside, it begins to cool and harden. Lava is magma that has come out onto the surface. Then um, it's forced up through the cracks of the crust and erupts in onto the surface. That's when it's called lava. So magma is the molten rock beneath the surface of the earth. And lava is the, the molten rock or the magma that has erupted out of the earth. So magma is in, still inside and lava is outside. Lava is the flowing liquid rock which flows across the ground until it's cooled and hardened into, into a solid rock again. Lava is that red-orange material seen um, coming out of the volcanoes. The eruption of lava, ash, gas, and fire forms a volcano. When people think of volcanoes, they think of the top blowing off a mountain and lava flowing out everywhere. Volcanic activity actually comes in many different forms and may not be as spectacular as a mountaintop erupting or exploding. The Hawaiian Islands were formed by volcanic activity, or a hot spot, continuous volcanic activity over a long period of time. Hawaii's volcanic activity started underwater, so underwater volcanoes, deep down near the ocean floor where the crust is fairly thin. It's easier for the magma to seep up from the mantle. It erupts and the lava cools very quickly and piles up over time. The piles turn into mountains from deep ocean floor to the surface where it becomes new dry land. The pile reach the ocean floor all the way to the ocean surface. Volcanoes National Park around Hawaii erupts gradually or little by little. Here the lava bubbles and gurgles and sputters rather than shooting up and out of the earth all at once. There is plenty of volcanic activity on some of the Hawaiian islands. The island chain is still growing. Mountaintops exploded in Washington state on the U.S. West Coast in 1980. Mount St. Helens today rises above the clouds. Um, it erupts occasionally today, but it's been uh, listed as the most destructive volcano in U.S. history. The magma constantly builds up in Mount St. Helens. The magma here is stickier than other places. It gets stuck and incredible intense pressure builds up within the mountain and it cannot hold it anymore and then boom, it blows off half the mountain. It's destructive and it causes damage. It's like a disaster, the sudden events that cause lots of damage and people that live there, it, it's called, it's inhabited because of the people that live there. 
It can be easy to figure out where volcanoes erupt, but it's hard to figure out when. Now the first thing we're going to do, of course, is we're going to go ahead and write our name. So flip your paper over and go ahead and put your name. And then we're going to flip it over. Now I'm going to go ahead and do mine in marker. So uh, we're going to go ahead and put it this way. We're going to have uh, another one that's going to be for part two. So we're going to go ahead and do it that way. <clears throat> First thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and uh, lightly put a line all the way across. Um, see, this is about the middle of my page. And I'm going to come down a little bit below. See my page? And I'm going to go ahead and come down a little below here, somewhere around here. That's going to be my my line for the, the bottom. And um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, um, well, this is my little area here. It's my little light line across. We're going to go ahead and think of like a little mountain. Very tiny in the very distance. And we're going to go ahead and let it grow some more. And we can go ahead and let it grow some more. And we're going to let it grow some more. And we're going to let it grow some more. And this is going to be my top layer, and it's going to grow some more. All right, so right here is going to be where my magma will be down here. Let's see, I'm going to go ahead. This is going to be my magma chamber. Remember, that's where the pressure is. And it's going to come straight up. It's going to come straight up. And um, this is the, where the lava is going to flow out, right? You can go ahead and put some, a little bit of lava if you want. I might put some on this side too. On, I'm going to go ahead and put a little section right here where um, that's where the steam is going to come from and a little escaping. And you know what? I'm going to say I have some lava escaping here. And then let me go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and build me a little steam around this distance area. That's going to be the steam. What kind of shape does that look like? Can you kind of figure out? It almost could be a triangle in this, huh? Almost a triangle. Hmm. So that's what I'm thinking of, huh? But you know what? Just pretend it, we could have a triangle up here, too, because that's where the smoke and the, that's where the ash, should I say, the ash cloud will be up here. So uh, here's going to be my ash cloud's going to be coming up this way. It's going to be coming up this way. Maybe I have some of it that comes out this way. I could have some coming underneath it too. Um, maybe I have uh, some of it uh, coming up some more this way okay I'm gonna just put some little wavy lines maybe some little that's my clouds in there and then these are gonna be darker clouds right I, I can go ahead and bring it out more if I'd like remember they have ash and such so my ash I'm gonna go ahead and put some little dots it's my little spots of ash you ever played uh, after uh, you had a campfire, played with the ashes underneath? So that could be my little ashes, my little ashes flying in the sky. I'm going to go ahead and put uh, a couple of volcanic bombs. It's like some great big old rocks that went ahead and broke off, uh, flew out. You know, it could be, it, it can actually be coming from this little space in, in here. They could have some coming in, in here. My little volcanic bombs what shapes you could use oh all kinds something that is organic shape remember made by nature made by nature 
Um, here's my ash cloud. I'm going to put a few more spaces in it. And I can put some more in a minute. Okay, so this is my, actually it's called a cone. Not an ice cream cone, but you, this is where it would come travel up and explode out this way. All right. So this is my my cone. And that's where my steam is escaping from my side vent. My side vent. And this, of course, is the crater right in here. And um, I'm going to go ahead and put a little line. This. Oh, well, let me go ahead and put my crust here. This is my crust. The crust. The crust. And I'm going to go real deep. Okay, so this is going to be really deep and far inside. And this is the magma chamber. Remember, that's where all the pressure builds and it explodes. So here I'm going to put some more. I'm going to go ahead and put some little rocks in the space in here. Oh, let me put one on this side too as well. Some little rocks in my space. If you have some extra space, if you want to, we're going to we could put some grass on the very top. Remember, that is the crust. This is where we walk around, okay? It's going to be really thin layer that's there. Okay, let's see. I could put another one right here. I'm going to put some um, stuff in white. And uh, in here, I can go ahead and put me some little rocks. And on this side too, I'll put me some little rocks. There we go. You can see all my everything that's going on here. All right, I am going to go ahead and close up my marker and I'm uh, going to start with getting my crayons out. Give you a second for that. Here we have my, our uh, volcano and I'm going to start off with my brown. This is going to be my ground. Remember, it depends on how hard pressure you use. You don't really have to use much. And I'm going to color over this. Uh, you have your pencil. Um, so if you need to erase any of the lines in between, it's OK. I'm going to just go ahead. I used my marker so I can't erase it. But uh, if you use your pencil, it won't show. Yes, you can go ahead and think about that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add some lines inside this. This is going to be where the lava is going and it flows out. And this is the lava area where it just spills out. Remember the lava is like a, a red with orange color. So you can go ahead. It can it can have little veins in it. It's, I'm going to be coloring it with red anyway, so it won't matter. And here's my red. I'm gonna go ahead and start coloring it up. If you don't get to finish yours, you can always just keep adding to it. Whenever you have a, a break. See, I'm gonna go ahead and try adding the, the red in here. And color in all of this area. This is where it's oozing out. It oozes out here and on it drips and slides down the, the volcano as well. And this again, this is the magma chamber. This is where it holds all the 
well, it has pressure and such. It has the pressure. I can go ahead and add more to it as well. Uh, I'm going to come down here towards the bottom. I like to just go ahead and just put some little wavy lines of uh, almost like I'm redrawing it, but not the same picture. That way when I color it, it's going to look, I can see some of the little veins in the yellow. I can use peach in there in the veins. <coughs> And um, I'm going to go ahead and use white inside here. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I'm using the little white circles in here so that it'll show just ever so slightly in my, when I color it up, it will show here in these areas. And um, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, my gray. Use a gray in here. So you can kind of see the little bit of white that's going through it. You can kind of see it underneath it. And I'm going to go ahead and color up on this side a little bit. I can darken that up too as I'm doing it. You can color these actually any color you really want. Just remember this is a ground colors. And um, I usually like to take, oh, I take my gray and do some little more in here. Because I'm going to be using my silver in here. If you don't have silver, you can just do a little bit, do some of the little lines in white and um, little lines. I'm going to come back over with black in just a minute so that it looks darker. You see how the yellow shows up in there in the cracks? You can use the yellow, the peach, any of the light colors will work. Experiment with it. Have fun. Sorry, you can see it. You can see it right here. So you see how I have the little... See how the little edges are showing? The little, the little what I drew in here with the yellow and then I came back with the gray and traced inside. Now in here I have a little white circles in here. I do have a few in there. They'll show up a little more later. I'm going to come back with this and add a little, just a little bit of black on top. Not that much. So it looks like a different color. The, the gray and the silver kind of come out the same look. Now I could use um, peach in there and make it look a little different. Um, over here I'm going to go ahead and take a few um, lines and swipes across. See how I have my, I'm just doing a few lines and swipes across. I'm going to go ahead and get my peachy color. Do the same thing. And if the peach crosses over into your magma chamber, it's okay because it's not going to show. You already have similar coloring in there already. I might do a few just ever so slightly with the black. Then I'm going to come and I'm going to get my brown and just do my brown really light really light on the brown really light on the brown I'm gonna come back over with my peach so it gives it all kinds of colors through there almost kinda looks like you're looking at the Grand Canyon with those little stripes 
Okay, here's my peach. I'm going to go ahead and add it a little more pressure on it. Now for these here, like every time it had a vo the volcano erupted, it uh, just grew and grew and grew. I am going to be using my peach and my uh, brown. Um, actually, I'm going to color most of it brown, really light. Really lightly with the brown. Then I'm going to come back over with my peachy color. I will darken up some of these with the brown, but I want it to look like different colors. So, I'm going to, oh, let's see, this one here, I'm going to go darker. I like to skip over my next one. I'm going to do this one darker. If you want to use different colors in here, as long as it's kind of ground. Oops. Oh, I should have skipped this one. I sure should have skipped this one. Look, I'm going to take my peach color. I'm going to put my peach in that. I just wasn't thinking while I was coloring. Okay, that's going to be my peachy. This is going to be my peach inside. And uh, I guess this one would be my peachy color inside here. I like to alternate. It means change in between. Do one and do the other. Do one and do the other. See, I should have. Sometimes if you scratch it off, it might, some of the color, extra color will come off. Some of it did. See, some of the color comes off. And I can put more peach on top. And on the others, I'm going to go ahead. This will be a peachy. This one will be the peach. If you want to mix it with yellow and brown, orange and brown. This is going to be the dark brown. This is going to be the dark brown. And um, my top, I'm going to be using grays. And then I'm going to put blue on the side. See how I have it all here? You can finish that off. You see, I just put white and gray in here, and I lightly colored it. Just white and gray. Over here, I went ahead and put a few strips of black inside. And I kind of colored a little black over the gray. Remember, this was my ash, and this is my ash cloud, my little specks of ash, and this is my volcanic bombs, and this is the layers of hard rock and ash. That's my cone, and that's where my mouth of the volcano is, the crater. I sure hope you had a good time today. I enjoyed it, and the bottom looks just like this. So I hope you really enjoyed. I had a wonderful time working with you. So we discussed volcanoes. And next week, we're going to go ahead and do uh, the geysers. Take a moment to view your artwork and look at your neighbor's artwork. Notice the similarities and the differences in your artworks. Thanks for joining me today. We've learned so many things. Oh, we talked about volcanoes found on Earth. And we created an artwork using lines, shapes, and colors to uh, illustrate a uh, um, cross-section of a volcano. Next week, we'll go ahead and do geysers. As you go through your week, Notice uh, what you hear um, about the Earth on radio, TV, in books and magazines. 
Enjoy the rest of your day. I can't wait to see you next time.